The University of Michigan and Emory University, and now two additional universities in New York and San Francisco, have received a mandate from the Clinical Research Center to find out exactly how many lupus patients there are, which is an important question because it identifies how many patients are at risk and, and uh, helps inform the need to do more lupus research. So, of course, if there are more lupus patients than people think, it's a good thing to find out. We in Ann Arbor are reviewing the records of all of the patients who have a diagnosis of lupus or might have one in a population of 2.2 million people in Wayne County, which is, includes Detroit and a large African-American population in Washtenaw County. The estimates of the prevalence of lupus range from about 1 in 2,000 to uh, estimates based on surveys, which are much higher. We are finding that the incidence of lupus is higher than previous estimates that have been published in, in detailed trials and have identified more than 2,500 patients out of 2.2 million, which would make an incidence of at least 1 in 1,000 or at least 1 in 500 women. And so we're finding more lupus than is in the books, although not as much as some people thought. Certainly, African Americans have a higher incidence of lupus than Caucasians. It's about four times higher. There's a lot of interest now in the differences between men and women. And it turns out that men have lupus about one-tenth as often as women, but that it's a more important problem in men because they do more badly. So. One of the questions is, well, do men show up with different kinds of disease activity? And in fact, it turns out that women are more likely to present with uh, problems that are more easily treated, such as rash, arthritis, pleurisy, whereas men tend to present more often with central nervous system disease, such as seizures and psychosis, or with kidney disease. So the way lupus presents is different in men than women, and they're already off to a bad start. We already know that, that kidney disease turns out less well in men and that mortality is higher in men. And some people wonder if guys just don't show up for treatment, but it looks as if that's really not true and that the disease is actually more severe in men than women. The differences that have been shown in response to therapy at the moment are more differences between racial and ethnic groups than between men and women. So we know, for example, that treating severe lupus kidney disease that Celsept or uh, mycophenolate may work better in African Americans and in individuals of Hispanic origin uh, than, in, than in Caucasians. And that difference, which appears to be genetic related, is probably an easy way of identifying genetic differences, and there are probably many other genetic differences between patients that, that help determine whether one person is going to respond to one drug or one person is going to respond to another. As far as I know, there haven't been any real differences in drug response shown between men and women yet, although it's a very interesting question, and it's a question that, that has been asked. On the other hand, does the intensity of therapy need to be higher? Well, I think that, that everybody needs the best possible care, and uh, so maybe the best way to put it is that one has to be more alert to the possibility that treatment is not working and people are high risk, and if people show the need for more intense therapy, then, then it has to be given. So, so because men have higher risk, then I think that when there are signs that trouble is brewing, that one has to pay close attention.